What's up guys, it's Grant Johnson. Today I'm bringing you a video on the five steps to building muscle, to gaining muscle. Now, first and foremost, I am not a doctor or a scientist, so I put these steps together based on my own experience and knowledge, as well as research, extensive research online through reliable sources. Now first, it's important to understand where you're at and your circumstances. If you've only been lifting for a little while or not much at all, then you'd be considered a newbie. Now, a newbie is someone who can get these good newbie gains where they gain a lot of muscle within just the first few months. Whereas if you're an experienced or more seasoned lifter, it might take longer to hit these gains and you might get some plateaus. Next, it is important to understand muscle gain is not easy. Sometimes it might seem like, oh, this guy just put on a bunch of mus muscle super quickly, super easily, but it's not that easy. It takes time and effort. All right, now without further ado, let's get into the five steps to gain muscle. All right, step one is to work out, to exercise. In order to gain muscle, you need to put your muscle through hypertrophy, which is when the fibers of your muscles are torn or damaged and then they get repaired, your body repairs them by fusing back together, which results in more mass and size in the muscle. Now this can be done through various types of ways and a great way is resistance training. That could be resistant bands, body weight, or the most popular, which is lifting weights. Personally, I recommend lifting as a great form of resistance training to get into that muscle hypertrophy. Now that is just from my experience and what I've always done but the other stuff can work. Now I'm not going to get specifically into what types of lifting you should do like high reps, low weight or high weight, low reps. If you want me to get into that, please leave a comment down below or message me on Instagram or something and let me know because I would be completely down to make a video like that. But for now, just understand that resistance training of some sort is the best. Next, it is important to understand that you need to be consistent and long term with your exercise. You gotta, it's easier to make gains if you are sticking to a plan and continue to challenge your muscles over a longer period of time because results can take time. Unless you're a newbie, you won't get results super quickly. And even after you get through those first newbie gains, it's going to take a while. You might plateau. So consistency and long term is important. It's also important to remember you have to make it challenging. You need to tear the muscle, put it into that hypertrophy in order to, for it to heal and come back bigger and stronger. Step number two is protein. When you lift weights, you increase muscle protein breakdown, and when you recover, your body promotes muscle protein synthesis, which repairs and uh, develops muscle fibers. If you don't have enough protein available, your body cannot properly promote muscle protein synthesis. So you might be wondering how much protein you need. Well, the common goal is about one gram of protein per pound of body weight. So a 180 pound person like me would try to shoot for 180 grams of protein in a day. Note that a lot of research shows that you don't actually need that much protein in a day, but it's a good goal to shoot for just to make sure you get enough protein. Some good sources of protein are eggs, meat, dairy, and protein powder. Now you should try to eat your protein before you get it from a shake so you get those other micronutrients that come with these foods. Personally, I take a protein shake each day right after my workout. Of course, the other macros are important too, but I want to emphasize the importance of protein for muscle gain. Step three is rest. Your muscles need time to repair because your body does not just heal the muscles instantly. It's a slower process. This means you should not train your muscle groups back to back days. It needs at least one day of rest in between. At least that's the common goal. In addition for rest time for your muscles, it's also important to get a good amount of sleep. Sleep is a time for your body to repair itself and repair your muscles as well as reduce stress levels overall. A recommended amount of sleep for the average adult is seven to nine hours. So that's a good goal to shoot for something in there. And I understand it's hard to get that sleep sometimes, but sleep is really, really important. Step four is to eat more, to be in a caloric surplus. You will likely want to be wanting to gain weight in the form of muscle since muscle weighs more than fat. So you need to be in a caloric surplus 
to do this. This is the opposite of a caloric deficit, which I mentioned in my previous video on how to lose weight. So this means you need to eat or consume more calories than you burn. That is a caloric surplus. Ideally, you would like to be only in a slight caloric surplus of 300 to 500 calories per day. Remember, this is supposed to be a slow and gradual process so that you don't put on too much fat. Now note that I don't mean eating cookies and ice cream all the time or just stuffing your face all the time. I mean eating a healthy, balanced diet which includes some of those happy meals like cookies in moderation. Even if you don't track your calories, just focus on making sure you get enough food. It's important to make sure you're not going hungry and you can just listen to your body because your body naturally knows when it's full or when it's hungry and it will let you know, just listen to your body. But if you're super serious about gaining muscle mass with as little fat as possible, I highly recommend you focus on counting calories, both how much you burn and how much you eat. Hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Step five is hydration, making sure you get enough water. Water is super, super important to your body, so much so that it makes up 60% of it. Water helps you regulate body temperature, lubricates your joints, and transport nutrients to keep your body energized and healthy, among many other things. Staying hydrated also helps prevent cramps and other health risks. A good way to regulate your hydration is by keeping your urine at a clear to slightly yellow color. Water does a lot for your body, and if you want to learn more, just Google it. You'll find a lot of benefits, so just understand it's important to stay hydrated. Another thing I like to mention is just enjoy the process. It shouldn't be a dreadful experience, and you should enjoy creating a healthier, happier, and stronger version of yourself. If you'd like me to go more in-depth on any of the steps I covered, just let me know with a comment down below or by sending me a message on Instagram, which is also in the description down below. All right, that's pretty much everything I got, guys. So I hope this video helped you. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, just let me know in the comment down below, and I will try to get back to you as soon as possible. But thanks for watching. If you're new, don't forget to subscribe, as well as hitting that bell icon to make sure you get notified every time I upload a new video. But thank you, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.